These series are getting more interesting by the days. Round two, game six for the NBA playoffs. Let's get into it. And before I start, I just wanted to mention two of these series are going to game sevens. The Bucks versus the Nets series and the Hawks versus the 76ers series. So I think that's just, you know, awesome that we've been able to see all these exciting matchups. So yeah, let's get into it. The Bucks defeated the Nets in game six in Milwaukee, 104 to 89. And I hate to say it, but the Nets are god awful. God awful without their star players. They have no depth. I mean, 89 points, you know, they, they're not even able to break 100, let, you know, let alone even 90 sometimes. Kevin Durant, you know, playing good as always, 32 points, 11 rebounds, but you know, that's even that's not enough um, when you don't have your stars. Uh, Jeff Green, only five points in 36 minutes. Only 12 points for Blake Griffin in 31 minutes. I mean, that's still pretty good. 40 minutes for Harden, um, but, you know, 16 points only. And, I mean, yeah, kind of take back what I said about the star thing. He is a star, but, you know, out of Harden, you do expect more points than that. Joe Harris had nine. Uh, Landry Shamit only had two, but besides that, no one really else contributed. Um, while the Bucks had a great game from Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, they were able to utilize their bench a little bit more. Um, they had some good dunks. Uh, but the Nets, I mean, they didn't even break 30 points in any of the quarters. And two of the quarters, they only scored 19 points. The Milwaukee Bucks did die down a little bit in terms of momentum in the third. But, you know, the, the Bucks just played a lot better. Um, and, I mean, I think 104 was a low number for the Bucks. I think they easily could have scored a lot more points. The Nets, on the other hand, 89. I mean, that's that's not much. Um, and, you know, we're going to game seven, um, heading to Brooklyn. I mean, I think the Nets, you know, they're definitely going to be have a chip on their shoulder. They lost this game. They've lost other games that they should have won. But the Bucks are just playing like the far better team right now. So, yeah, going to game seven. Next one, Sixers-Hawks. The Hawks lost in game six, so we're going to have a game seven in this series too. Sixers won 104-99, to close one. They won by five. This one kind of came down to the end. It was in Atlanta. Um, leading scorer for uh, the 76ers was Joel Embiid with 20, or actually Seth Curry with 24 points. Tobias Harris had 24 points too. Uh, Furkan Korkmaz had seven points, 22 for Embiid. I mean, not, nothing too crazy in terms of scoring for them. No one over, you know, 25 points. But still, I mean, collectively they played well. Ben Simmons didn't play that good. Um, he, he shared the ball, but only six points. Hawks, I mean, you know, Trey Young played great as always. He had a double-double with um, 34, 12, and 5, 34 points. But, you know, I mean, he didn't. He needed more help. 14 from Capella was good. 17 from Herder. Um, Bogdanovich only had 7, though. Um, 16 for Gallinari. Um, and, I mean, I think both teams played good. This series has been great. The Hawks are a surprise to me. I mean, if they win this series, they'll be a huge upset. Um, I think whoever wins this series is, you know, rightfully deserves it um because you know both teams have played great um you know both teams could you know improve their three-point percentage a little bit but i think you know the way both of these teams are playing it's very competitive is all games are pretty close except for you know one or two and i think this is a really good series so the sixers win 104 99 we're gonna head to philly for game seven and i mean i think both teams have pretty much an equal shot i think trey young has to bring his a game i think joel Embiid has to bring his a game and yeah should be interesting the last game, the Clippers will move on and play the Suns now in the conference finals with a 131 to 119 game six victory over the Utah Jazz. And uh, yeah, so the one seed is out, which is pretty interesting um, and, you know, definitely an upset. Um, I didn't really expect the Clippers to get this far, but they wrote they 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 rose to the occasion, you know, um, they, they played a lot good, really good in these moments. Um, pretty su big surprise. Terrence Mann was the leading scorer. Um, in this game, well, tied with Donovan Mitchell, but for the Clippers, he was a leading scorer. Terrence Mann had 39 points um, in 36 minutes starting forward, and I, I think that's, you know, great. Um, obviously, no Kawhi, so they needed someone to step up. I mean, you don't have Kawhi, your best player. you got to play like, you know, there's no tomorrow. You're playing a team that is wants to force a game seven. They're the one seed for a reason, and he rose to the occasion. Congrats to man. I mean, he, you know, I'm not a Clippers fan, but I like to see guys that don't normally score that much, you know, play like there's no tomorrow. Like I said, 28 for Paul George. He's playing great. 27 for Reggie Jackson, 12 for Patrick Beverly off the bench. Um, seven for Marcus Morris senior, 16 for Batum jazz. Like I said, they had, uh, their leading score was Donovan Mitchell with 39 points in 40 minutes, but he needed, you know, help as well. Um, Boyan Bogdanovich had 14, um, Rudy Gobert had 12, he had a double-double, 
um, with 10, 2, and 12. 21 for Clarkson, but Jazz had a great season. Um, not going to discredit that, but they did need to win this. And uh, yeah, so LA Clippers win 4-2. to two. Let me know your guys' thoughts on all these series, and uh, see you in the next one.